you have your Bibles with me, turn to Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. The last two weeks we spent in chapters 4 and 5. We've been in heaven, we've been around the throne, and we've seen what true worship is. And folks, I am telling you as much as even today, the Holy Spirit is here. We are worshiping, we are praising, we see, see a little of God's glory, but it, it's going to be nothing compared to heaven and when we get there. And I'm telling you, I cannot wait. Uh, inside your bulletin is an outline or uh, just something here that I want to help you with. And I want to say today is very, very important. I am hoping we can get you to understand the basis of all of Revelation uh, today. And it's going to be a challenge, and I ask you to listen carefully, and uh, hopefully the Holy Spirit will uh, work with you, uh, because uh, this is not an easy uh, thing to understand. But we will be looking at that, and today I want to talk to you about the first four seals. The first four seals. And if you have a bulletin and you want to do an outline, it's real simple. Real simple outline, the first, four, the first seal the second seal, the third seal, and the fourth seal. Now, it doesn't get much simpler than that, all right? And uh, I want you to know uh, today, uh, I truly believe our redemption draweth nigh. With everything going on in the world, everything, I, I'm just telling you folks, the rapture of the church could happen any day now any day. And in the book of Revelation, it teaches us that we are headed for the largest war mankind has ever seen called the Battle of Armageddon. But before, th before that happens, things will get worse and worse as time goes on. We have already seen wars and famines and earthquakes and floods, an increase in time, uh, crime. Uh, the, the weather patterns are crazy and there have been mass shootings at a high, high number. Revelation 6 begins a time of judgment here on earth where God will judge a rebellious world like no other in the history of mankind. We already know that it will begin with Jesus opening that first scroll, which is the title deed to earth. And when the scroll is uh, unrolled and the seals are broken, God's wrath will begin with seven seals of judgment on mankind. The seven seals will encompass the entire great tribulation, culminating with the second coming of Jesus Christ. The judgments intensify, intensify as all the seals are open. Let's look at those first four seals as John penned them. Billy Graham in 1983 addressed Revelation 6 through 9 in a book he entitled Approaching Hoof, Hoofbeats, The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. This future time has been called the day of the Lord, Daniel's 70th week, and the great tribulation. So with that in mind, look at your, your handout. You have a small one there, and I want to show you and, and explain this to you. And start right at the top, the seven years of tribulation. We believe, and I believe, that the next thing on God's prophetic calendar is the rapture of the church. And you have to understand when the rapture happens, chaos will break out. Christians will be doing automobiles, all right? Christians will be flying airplanes. Christians will be doing all these things that we think are just normal things. And when they get raptured out of here, it's going to be incredible. People are not going to know what to do. Panic and chaos is going to strike the planet. And here's why I believe, and I, I've told you before, I'm a pre-trib. I believe the rapture is the next thing, and there's people that are ah and post-trib. But the thing that you have to understand is 1 Thessalonians 1.10 says, he will save us from his wrath. That's why I believe we will not be here. The judgment is for mankind that has rejected Jesus Christ as Lord. There are people now that they will, they will publicly shake their fist in the face of God. And I'm telling you folks, they will stand before a holy God. 
They will give an account of their life to God. And here we see, because some people say, this is just harsh. No, folks, it's what mankind has done to our world and to our planet and the world that we know. It's not safe to go to Walmart. It's not safe to go to church now. We have seen these shootings and all these things going on. So what God's going to do, his wrath is going to fall. And I am telling you, when it does, it's, gonna, it's just going to be crazy here on earth. Now look at the top. Seven years of tribulation, uh, Daniel's 70th week. This covers Revelation 6 through 19, the chapters. And what he does, he goes back to the, uh, Daniel goes back to Babylonian captivity. All right, and the key here, and here's why most people don't understand this, is because the key is one week equals seven years. That does not compute in our minds. We think one week is seven days. But in the prophetic calendar, and what you have to understand is, folks, God gave this prophetic uh, uh, graft here, God gave these pro prophetic news to the Old Testament prophets. Jesus, in his concourse, in, in, in his Olivet, excuse me, Olivet address there. He also said it, and then John says the same thing. So it's not like one person is saying this. Old, new, and Jesus is saying this day is coming. So the first seven weeks, according to Daniel, Jerusalem will be rebuilt, and that equals 49 years. 49 years, and you're going to have to take my word for this, all right? And uh, by the way, if you don't understand this, see uh, Brother Cody or see Brother Steve after the service, all right? <laughs> the, second, the second set of things that are going to happen is there's going to be silence. Heaven is not going to speak. You have to understand, in the Old Testament, when Malachi cut off, there was 400 years there. And there's silence for 440 or 34 years, which is 62 weeks. Seven weeks, Jerusalem's built. Silence for 62 weeks, which equals 434. And you add those together, and there's 69 weeks. And right now, we live in the day of grace, as Phil spoke of. And here's the deal, folks. You can come to Christ easily right now. Nobody's holding a gun to your head. Nobody's trying to kill you. Nobody says it's going to take, they're going to take your life. And my question is, what makes you think you're going to stand up for grace when it might really cost you something? And here's my warning. If you miss the rapture of the church, you better pray to God quickly. I'm serious quickly, because uh, the way things will get so bad, and we'll see this in our scripture, that you have to make a decision, do I want to starve to death, or am I going to die? There's two ways to do it. And folks, I am telling you, you can be saved if you call out to God. So we see the 69 weeks, we see the age of grace, and that was right up to John the Baptist and Jesus. And I believe the next theme is the rapture of the church. So the Daniel 70th week equals seven years or 490 years. And you have to realize that that last week, the last week is seven years. And when, it, when we are raptured out of here, the Antichrist will come on the scene. All right? Chaos will break out. And he will make a covenant, a seven-year covenant with Israel and he will promise peace in the Middle East. Nobody has been able to do that. They've tried and they've tried and they've tried, but I'm telling you, the Antichrist is going to take over. He will reinstate the temple sacrifices, and everything will seem to be well. But halfway through the tribulation period, I'm telling you, he's going to desecrate the temple He's going to break the covenant, covenant with Israel, and he's going to set up himself as ruler of Israel and the world. The first half, the three and a half years, is called the tribulation there, as you see on the second line in our uh, handout here. The, the, the second part of the great is the great tribulation. 
And after that all happens, the rapture of the church, I said, will happen. And then what will happen is these seals and all these things during the tribulation will break out. The next thing, if you will see, uh, there is the battle of Armageddon on your top right. And folks, I'm telling you, that's the second coming. Too many people mix up the rapture of the church with the second coming. These are two totally different things. And you have to understand, Jesus is coming, and I'm telling you, he will destroy Satan. He will destroy all the armies and those that come up against him. And he will throw them in hell. And there will be, if you see down on the right, fi Satan's final rebellion on your far right, the great white throne judgment in the millennium period of Christ is 1,000 years here on earth of peace. And then eternity, if you see on the right side there. So you also see the next graph down there where it says the seals. In year one, year two, year three, year four, years five through seven, these are the things that we will be covering. And you see the seals, number one, the white horse, the red horse, the black horse, the pale horse. Then you have the cry of the martyrs and the cosmic uh, disturbances, and then the seven trumpets. And you have to understand, this will help you, the seventh seal is the seven trumpets, okay? The seven seals is the seven trumpets, and then uh, the seven trumpets brings in the seven bowls. So these all happen in history, and they all, it's, it's just literally chaos and craziness, and they intensify, and they intensify. So I hope this graft, and again, don't worry about the Daniel thing, okay? Take my word for it, folks. The, the Bible is accurate. It is perfect. There are no mistakes in it. Every number makes sense, and every number is amen, truth, and the holy word of God. Amen. Now, let's look here in our text, in our text. Revelation 6, now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard uh, one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, come and see. And I find it interesting. I told you Jesus Christ spoke of this in his, in his Olivet Discourse. Hold your finger right there if you would, and go to Matthew 24 with me. Matthew 24, you got to see this. Matthew 24, verse 3. Now, as he said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? The end of the age means things like they are. Things like they are. And it says, and Jesus said unto them, take heed that no one deceives you. Folks, there's going to be a great deceiver and that deceiver is the Antichrist. He is a liar, liar, pants is always on fire. Okay? There's no bigger liar than him. There's not one. Read the word. It says that. He is the father of lies. And this, this scripture here, uh, verse 4, talks about the first seal. This is the first seal. For many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and will deceive many. That's exactly what he's going to do. Then verse 6, and you will hear of wars. That's the second seal. The second seal is wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. It is the tribulation period, but it's not the great tribulation. Things will be twice as bad in the great tribulation as they are in the the tribulation. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquake. That's the third seal. The third seal is famine. Famine like no other that you hear. Because listen, folks, when there's war and all that going on, there's, there's rationing that has to take place. Rationing in, in, in food. Uh, and I don't even have time today to get into the mark of the beast. I'm just telling you, I'll give you another warning. Do not, if you are left behind, do not take the mark of the beast. Your soul will be damned to hell if you do. That's the best I can say for you. Do not take 
the mark of the beast. Then it says earthquakes and places. And all these things are the beginning of sorrow. That's the fourth seal. And the fourth seal is death. All right? There's going to be wide death spread throughout. So we can see what God is doing. And we can see that John is recording what is going to take place at the tribulation period. And then we see Jesus' words, which go right down verse by verse with exactly what we are talking about today. So let's look back up in Revelation 6. And the land opened the first seal, and one of the four living creatures uh, saying, with a voice like thunder. When you hear thunder, what happens? There's a storm coming. You hear thunder and lightning, I'm telling you, there's a storm coming. And folks, there is a storm coming. There really is. Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. And we think of a white horse. Uh, the kings, uh, once they conquered some land, if you notice, they always rode in these pra uh, parades of victory a white horse, which is a victor's horse. And a victor's crown is what they were, wore. But some people think the first one, this first white horse, is Jesus Christ. But folks, it's not. His crown is a diadem. He is king of kings and lord of lords. And it says, and he who had it had a bow. But notice it doesn't have any arrows. What is he talking about? He's talking about a cold war here. He's talking about he's going to make a bunch of promises and make pacts where everybody believes in that first year that he is, and I want to use the word little Savior. Big Savior is Jesus Christ with a capital. Little Savior is all these emperors that think they're ruling the world, but they are not. And a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering to conquer. Folks, I am telling you, he is going to promise world peace. Folks, are we not set up for this very thing in the world in which we live? You think about it. Let me give you four terms I want to remind you of. One world government. One world currency. One world church. And this is the latest artificial intelligence. Amen. Folks, I am telling you, it is from the pit of hell. That is the way, and this is coming, folks. Scott showed me a, 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 a text or a, a deal just, I, I guess it was yesterday? Last week, he showed me, and the UN is buying this hook, line, and sinker. And folks, I'm telling you, everything is showing that I'm t the ball is rolling, and these things are already taken place. Now, we shouldn't fear as Christians, because we know it's going to happen. I'm telling you, the Bible tells you it's going to happen. Why should we fear all the songs you sang? We shouldn't fear storms. Man, God's going to take us out here. God's going to take care of us. So we should not fear. And folks, this, th these things that are going on will usher in the Antichrist and those who remain, it will be extremely believable. He's already lying to us. You know the biggest lie of the devil? You got time. You got time. Oh, folks, my Bible says now is the day of salvation. Now is the day. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you need to make that decision today. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm reading from the Word of God and telling you exactly what it says. So we see the first seal, which is uh, the Antichrist on a white horse and promising false peace. Look at the second seal. And when he opened the second seal, I heard a second living creature saying, come and see. And another horse, a fiery red, went out. And the second seal is war. And for the Antichrist to rule during this time, there's going to have to be wars. And where there is wars, there is bloodshed. And that's what the red is about, this red horse. And it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth. And he'll come out 
you know, at first as a man of peace. But then when other countries or other people, and we'll get into that later on, go up against him, war will break out and there will be much bloodshed. And it says that the people should kill one another and there was given to him a great sword. So I'm just telling you folks, people are going to die during this war. That is the second seal. And I'm not going to take the time uh, to go to Daniel 8, because again, I just wanted to give you an overview of that. You, you have these in your bulletins, and you go and read this, okay? Read these scriptures, and they go just right along with the weeks of what we are talking about. So the third seal, the third seal, and when he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, come and see. So I look and behold a black horse. And he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hands. What will happen because of war? Folks, I'm telling you, famine will break out. And we know there are famines all over the world. And during this time, it will be uh, at great cost. It will kill many, many people. And why the pair of scales? Because that's what they weigh wheat and barley with. Wait, they weigh that. Uh, wheat and barley and oil and wine are the four things, all right, that, that are staples in the Middle East. And I am telling you, the uh, Antichrist will have control of these things. And folks, you have to understand, all right, it's not going to be a fair game. He does not play fair, all right? He does things for himself. He, he will literally say during this time, I am God, and you will worship me. Oh, folks, there's only one God. That's the God of this Bible. That is the God that is on the throne in heaven. He is Jehovah God, and Jesus and God are going to take care of his people. And notice the saying here, a quart of wheat for a denarius. And we know a denarius is a day's wages for uh, men working back then. And we know wheat was, was very, very important. And it's, it's important uh, in our world today. And notice what it says, in three quarts of barley for a denarius. Barley was a, was a poor man's wheat. See, barley didn't have the, barley doesn't have the nutrition nutritional value that wheat does. But because of famine and because all this going on, people will have to, uh, you know, get barley. And, and if a man's day's wages is that, that's what, uh, that's what can take and be fed one person for one day. Well, what if you have four children? Okay, folks, what are you going to have to do? You're going to have to buy barley. And if you have the money for that, that's okay. But it's simply saying it will be a famine like no others. And then it says, a quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of bar barley for a denarius and do not harm the oil and the wine. There will still be folks that will be able to have oil and wine, but I'm telling you, it will all be for the rich and under the power of the Antichrist. So we see these first three horses that are described uh, in this first part of the tribulation. And then the fourth horse. And when he opened a fourth seal, I heard the voice of four living creatures saying, come and see. So I looked and behold, a pale horse. And when we see a pale horse, uh, the color alone uh, will tell you, uh, uh, you know, when a person dies, they have this grayish green color uh, after they pass away. And th that's what's going to happen uh, in here. There will be uh, a lots and lots of people dying during this fourth seal. Death will be everywhere. And it says, and the name of him who said on it was death and Hades, Hades followed him. Well, folks, we know what death is. We know death is when this body, when our earthly tabernacle dies. 
it dies. But again, folks, I thank God that the Bible says uh, to be absent from the body as Christians is to be present with the Lord. When you take your last breath here on earth, you will take your first breath in heaven. But then it says Hades. And folks, we know that is the world of the dead. Death is the body that dies. And in Hades, it's when the soul dies apart from Jesus Christ. Oh, folks, I'm telling you, and I talked to a man one time, and here's what he said to me. I was witnessing in Lawton, Oklahoma, and he said, when he hears that trumpet sound, I'm going to repent. I'm going to invite Jesus into my life. That way I can live my life now how I want to live. And I said, sir, you don't understand. If you look at 1 Corinthians 15, the Bible says, in the moment, in a twinkling of an eye, you know what a twinkling of an eye is? I've looked it up. One one thousandth of a second. You're not getting all that in, folks. It ain't going to happen. So I'm telling you, widespread death will happen. And look what it says. And the power was given to them over a fourth of the earth. A fourth of the population will die also. Looking at today's statistics, you know how many people that'll be? 1.5 billion people will die. Folks, when we're talking about death here, we're not talking about a country. We're talking about worldwide. We're talking about death that we have never seen, never seen in all of history. And again, I'm not trying to scare anyone. I am not a fear text. Te that's not my... That's not my style. That's not what I'm doing. I'm telling you the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what revelation is. And there are a lot of people. One is there's preachers that won't preach it. And two is people don't read it. One, because they don't understand it. Two, because it's telling the truth. And there's a lot of times, folks, we don't want the truth in our lives. We want to be left alone. We want to live our lives the way, God, the, the, the way we want to live, not the way God wants us to live. So I'm just warning you today. I'm just telling you from the depths of my heart, this stuff, it's going to happen. And we will see worldwide death like you have never seen before. To kill with a sword, with hunger, and with death, and by the beast of the earth. Now, the beast could be a lot of things. I'll tell you one thing, I hope it's not, for those who are still here, rats. Think about it. Historically, I'm telling you, they have, think about the Black Plague. There's a lot of ways. And when it says death, it's not just going to be war, folks. It's these other things that are going to kill hundreds upon thousands upon literally 1.5 billion people. So we have to understand, God is serious. God is serious about what he is teaching. God is serious about, we need to wake up, folks. We as Christians need to realize that we, we have folks in our families that are not saved. We have neighbors that are not saved. We have friends that are not saved. And the greatest gift, and, and folks, I'm all for Christmas and giving gifts, but the greatest gift that was given was at Christmas when Jesus was born. And the greatest gift we can give any human being, any man of the age of accountability is the gospel of Jesus Christ. They will never die. And folks, I'm telling you, we must understand this is our responsibility. I am so glad you're here today. I am so glad we go to church. I love to worship and praise with you. But folks, it's getting serious. Our world is in chaos. Some of the things that we are allowing our country to become are a shame. Things that we wouldn't even talk about 30 years ago. They're shoving it down our throats and they're telling us, and this is what they want you to believe, 
this is the new normal. It is not the new normal. Satan's been alive forever. Satan lied to Adam and Eve, and he is lying to you if you think you can live your life any way you want, and you're going to heaven. And that's what I want to say. Hebrews chapter 10, and I close with this. Well, no, I got one more scripture. (laughs) Sorry about that. Hebrews 10, verse 30. For we know him who said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Oh, folks, sometimes we get so upset when somebody offends us or hurts our feelings. Oh, folks, we haven't hurt God's feelings. We have broken his laws and broken his words. And there's going to be a line drawn. Folks, he has already drawn the line in the sand. And that is happening already And when that last person is saved, God knows who it is, where they're at, at, how old they are, and when it's going to happen, right now. And I believe with all my heart, the Antichrist, and we'll talk about this much, much more in the future, he's here, he's primed, he's ready, and it's going to happen, folks. And the Lord will judge his people. Listen to this. And it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Folks, you're going to see things you have never seen in your life if you are left behind. Um, We are already seeing things we have never seen. And then Hebrews 2, and I close with this, truthfully, (laughs) honestly. (laughs) Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things that we have heard, lest we drift away. Oh, folks, our church, the church, the church of the living God is drifting away. I never thought in my life we would hear the word homosexual pastors. We are drifting away. And it's not okay to murder unborn children. It's not okay. For if the word was spoken through angels, proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation. If you have been to our services one time, you have heard the gospel. I ask you this this week, Steve, can you ever remember me not saying something about the gospel in in a message? I will always do that. Because see, some people only get one chance. One chance at it. You have no excuse is what God is saying. And it says, which at the first began by the, and spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him, God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders and various miracles, Jesus showed all of that. And then the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we have the Holy Spirit in us. We have discernment in us. We should know better according to his own will. And you know what his will for you is? To be saved. He wants you saved, but he doesn't want to make you be saved. He's not going to make you be saved. The Holy Spirit has to prick your heart. The Holy Spirit has to call you to salvation. And I'm telling you, in a crowd this size, I believe with all my heart, there is someone here today that needs to be saved. He has given you the Word. He has given you Scripture. The Holy Spirit is dealing with you right now. You've been thinking about it. You've been thinking about it. You may have not told one soul, but it's been bothering you. Could I make a suggestion to you? Not a suggestion. Could I make a plea to you? Would you please get saved before it's eternally too late? It's real, folks. Heaven is real. Hell is real. My God is real. Jesus is real. And the Holy Spirit wants you saved. And to the Christian, the Holy Spirit wants you right with Him. So that when people ask you, why did you react that way? You could say, because I'm a Christian. Could I share something with you? Father, thank you for this day. 
God, I thank you so much for your word. God, I thank you that you have given us warning after warning after warning. And God, I just pray, Lord, that you would deal with us. Yes, as a church, but also as individuals. God, I pray if there's one here today that doesn't know you, God, I pray that they would come forward and give their heart and their life to Jesus. God, I pray for the Christian. God, I pray that we would live as if it would happen tomorrow. God, it could. I'm not predicting anything. But God, I pray, and I believe with all my heart, your redemption draweth nigh. And God, I look forward to the day. God, I can't wait for the rapture of the church, but there's still people that need to be saved. So God, would you get us on our knees? Would you help us to make a list of, of people that you know that needs to be saved? God, I pray that we would be an example and a light, a lighthouse to folks around us. God, this is your church. This is your invitation. This is your time. God, I pray that you would do with it what you choose. And God, I pray that today someone would choose Jesus. And God, we'll give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?